Hello, everyone. everyone. This is Edith Callahan online. I'm the coordinator for environment and sustainability studies. Um, could could the slide could just go back one, please? I just wanted to start with uh, a quick discussion of the arts core uh, to let everybody know that no matter what major you take within arts, everybody has to do the arts core. Um, and it just simply provides a basic foundation in a host of arts courses and also uh, requires you to take um, some science classes. And so it's a, it's a really good foundation. Okay, on to environmental studies, please. Okay, so like I said, I'm the coordinator for ESST or Environment and Sustainability Studies. Our program is a program that takes quite a broad or holistic view of sustainability studies. Uh, we don't simply look at environmental issues, but also social issues. So our, our conceptualization of sustainability is uh, really quite comprehensive. And the way we do that is by being an interdisciplinary program. So students will graduate with a small, a, a, a strong understanding of the multiple dimensions of sustainability. Um, and we get there by you taking campus in addition to core SST courses. Uh, so up you, what you see on the slide here is tree planting by some students. We are very focused on experiential learning. And if we move to the next slide, uh, we'll see some more of students engaging in um, activities that they do either through their courses or on their own. Could we move to the next slide, please? I, I am not sure if you're hearing me. Could we move to the next slide, please? Yes, it might be oh, okay. frozen on your end. Um, okay. It's for me. Okay. okay. All right, I, I didn't see it change on my end. Um, well, hopefully people had a chance to see some of those photos. We had a photo of uh, people putting in a water fountain for reusable mugs and uh, the farm that we have here at Acadia uh, University, the student led and managed farm. Uh, so lots of great engaged activities, either through classrooms or through the sustainability society that we have on campus that's run by students. Uh, what you're looking at right now is just a, a vision of the program at a glance. There are some pretty basic courses. They have a strong foundation in terms of conceptual understanding of sustainability and philosophy for understanding um, how we treat each other and the earth and society. Then things start uh, getting a little bit more engaged year with applied leadership and sustainability and elective uh, program. Round out your education in ESL. We'll be taking courses from a number of other um, departments on campus, including uh, WGST, which we'll hear about in a minute, and sociology, but also nutrition, environmental science, community development. And so, next slide, please. So, I'll, I'll just presume that there's a delay. Danielle, could you tell me what you're seeing? Yeah, so I'm, I see the ESST concentrations and degree options slide. 
Great. I don't see that yet, but I'll just uh, conclude this by saying there are four concentrations if students are, um, you know, feeling a bit awash about how to focus their degree within ESST. You could be more uh, entrepreneurial and innovation focused. You could be more education and activism focused. You could move more into thought and practice, so more of a philosophical approach. And community development for options that students could elect to choose in terms of streams or concentrations. We also have a study abroad program, an honors program. People can elect to do a double major and also a co op. So I hope that this answers most people's questions, and I look forward to answering any further questions in the future, or you could feel free to contact me. Uh, outside of this webinar as well. Now I will hand it off to sociology. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Stephen Henderson. I'm the acting head of the Department of Sociology. Um, and uh, the uh, sociology program, if we can start with the next slide. Um, sociology is literally the study of society. So it's uh, it really explores lots of very interesting uh, broad social complexities, but also interpersonal relationships, um, problems that emerge, how people uh, experience the world based on uh, their various identities. Um, so it's, it's really uh, about understanding society um, broadly. The um, key theme of sociology is to teach you how to analyze and think critically, um, but also to do research and engage with the, the social world. Uh, the themes of the program um, you'll see are knowledge and power, understanding how power works in our society and how power constructs knowledge. Um, social justice, uh, we attract and encourage some really engaged students who are active in a number of different areas um, seeking greater justice. And also just the sociology of everyday life, um, which is quite closely linked to anthropology. Uh, Kitty doesn't have an anthropology department, but we offer an anthropology introduction course and uh, anthropology, uh, the study of how humans uh, behave and how to create culture. These things are uh, common throughout the program. So the next slide and we'll it, it really is a program um, intended to help you both understand society, but also to research it and to change it. Um, we have several courses in methodology and teaching people how to do research. Um, there's qualitative research, which means um, reading texts, interviewing people, um, looking at advertisements. Um, there's quantitative research, which can be doing population studies, demographics or doing surveys uh, of groups of people, students, other people. Um, and we also have uh, a strong theory uh, stream. So, so you can learn about um, contemporary and classical social theory, um, theories about how the world functions, about how inter humans interact. And we um, have developed a course in writing in the social sciences, which uh, teaches um, some very basic skills for uh, communicating um, all of this research material effectively and across a broad spectrum. So that is really good preparation, whether you want to stay in sociology or whether you want to move into public affairs after your graduation. Um, it's really a kind of a key skill. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, Acadia also uh, has a, a internationally or nationally respected co-op program and sociology students have begun to join um, very eagerly with this program. And uh, I have a little quotation here from Morgan Le Leary, who did the uh, program a few years ago. Um, we currently have four or five students in the co-op co program, and they take a work term uh, typically every year to um, go out and apply what they've learned in the classroom and also um, see how work experience goes. So this year, for example, we had uh, somebody who was a program coordinator at a senior center and helped uh, design lots of um, local history and memory projects. Uh, There's another student who did a co-op program with intellectually challenged adults 
um, and organized uh, day trips with them and daily activities and crafts. Um, and they find these both very rewarding, but also that the co-op experience reinforces what they're studying in the classroom. And, and as Morgan says, um, it gave her some very valid job skills and, and let, her, let her straight into a career from graduation. The next slide, please. The sociology program is also um, known across campus for our engaged students and the way that our students uh, take charge of research. Um, certainly the faculty presents research from time to time, but we really encourage our students. Um, and one of the more popular um, venues is something called Commit Sociology, which has been going on for a number of years now. Um, and you'll see three posters from recent Commit Sociology events, two from this last year. Um, one, uh, the first one, the Apple a Day presentation was um, where students in a third year methodology course presented the research that they had done um, interviewing, surveying students across campus about how they deal with stress. Um, they got to present that research four times uh, to the admin, to fellow students, to faculty, um, to the Department of Nutrition, to biology. Um, they're, it's really rewarding experience for them. Um, another commit sociology you see is uh, Weinstein's time up, Time's Up, talking about the Harvey Weinstein verdict and where uh, the Me Too movement goes from here. And then finally, the uh, Shut Up and Play Commit Sociology was a very popular one from a couple of years ago, where they looked at the uh, the meaning of what of Colin Kaepernick's taking a knee, and uh, what the different social reactions were to that, and why. So it's um, really encourages uh, students to um, take what they're learning and actually apply it in real life and in real time. So it's it's a very good uh, experience teaching you how to. Uh, research contemporary issues and talk about them in a public forum. Uh, and the next slide. And this is a list, uh, you'll see the, the skills that um, students develop in our program. Uh, this is, these are common skills across the, across the uh, Faculty of Arts and hopefully across the campus. Um, but uh, we do underscore, you know, how valuable these are to, uh, to you and hopefully to your future employers. Um, and some of the careers you'll see um, that our graduates have gone on to. Um, a number of our graduates uh, go through grad school and on to become professors. Many go into social work, um, but there's also lots and lots of other um, careers that may not strike you as obvious at first, um, but with these skills, our, our graduates are able to move laterally um, into a lot of uh, places where they're interacting with humans and trying to understand uh, social relationships. So um, I will pass it off now to uh, Dr. Aaron Crandall, who's going to tell you about WGST. So this video is um, going to be posted in the chat box um, just because of the delay um, that we're experiencing, and we'll get that up on our website as well. Now over to Aaron. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. My name is Erin Crandall and I'm the coordinator of women, women's and gender studies. So let me tell you a little bit about WGST. We'll go to the slide. So uh, it strikes me that if you're coming into university, women's and gender studies is probably not a course that you had the opportunity to take in high school. So it, the question of what is women and gender studies. It is in the name, but it is more than the name of women and gender studies. So WGST is a program of study that emphasizes the importance of gender as a means of analyzing power and inequality. And so you could see uh, a lot of crossover with uh, a field like sociology that's interested in understanding how society works or ESST that wants to understand how society impacts on the environment. These are also questions that uh, women in gender studies are asking through the lens of gender. And like ESST, WDST is multidisciplinary and it's interdisciplinary. So what that does mean is that if you're a women in gender studies major or if you're minoring in women in gender studies, you're going to be taking some core women in gender studies courses. 
but you're also going to be taking some cross-listed courses from other departments across the Faculty of Arts and even in the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Professional Studies. So you take courses from a range of different disciplines, uh, but what unites all of these courses is their inclusion of themes and issues related to women and gender. And so if you go to the next slide, when we talk about uh, women and gender studies being multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, uh, one of the examples we can look at is our faculty. So this is a picture of Dr. Claudine Bonner with a graduating students from a convocation a couple of years ago. Uh, she is a professor who teaches in women and gender studies and also in the Department of Sociology. And so if you take the introductory course for women and gender studies this fall, it's very possible that you'll You'll be having that course with uh, Dr. Bonner, or if you're taking a course in sociology, you might see her. Uh, but you can see how in women and gender studies, you're going to get exposure to professors from all different departments who will have different skill sets, different approaches to the study of women, gender, and sexuality. But what you'll get is a very broad exposure um, to the field. So if we go to the next slide. What does your first year look like if you're a women and gender studies major? The thing that you're going to want to do is take introduction to women's and gender studies, either in the fall or the winter. You, as uh, Edith was saying, want to keep in mind that you're going to need to complete the arts core, ideally in your first two years. You don't have to finish it in your two years, but that's a good rule of thumb. So be aware of those requirements for the arts core. And something that you'll want to keep in mind with women and gender studies is that you'll be taking a lot of cross-listed courses and some of these courses are going to have prerequisites. So for example, in order to take the psychology of gender from the Department of Psychology, you're going to have to take an introductory course in psychology first. And so prerequisites are not something that's unique to being in women and gender studies. All university students have to deal with prerequisites, but you probably have to deal with this a little bit more if you're in women and gender studies. And in your first year, this could be a bit confusing, but that's why I'm here to help you. Uh, if you ever have questions, you just reach out by email or you know, hopefully um, come to the office of the coordinator and we'll be able to give you advice on what courses you need to take in order to create that pathway to your major or your minor. And really in that first year where you have to take one introductory course in women and gender studies, the goal is, is to explore and learn to get exposure to lots of different fields and new ideas and really have an enriching university experience. So if we could go to the next slide. Uh, in terms of degree options, what I did here was just take a screenshot of the Women and Gender Studies webpage to show you the different degree options that Women and Gender Studies has, which is honors, major, minor, and a co-op options very similar or the same as sociology and ESST. And if you want to learn more about the details of any of those options, you can go to the website. Um, and if you have questions after that, you can always ask me. I'm really happy to answer them. But somebody who can probably give you an even better insight into this program is if you go to the next slide, uh, is a student. Uh, and we have a great student on the line with us, Sammy McKenzie, who just finished her honors degree in women's and gender studies. So she's a graduate as of May 2020. She was also the social media coordinator for women's and gender studies. So she was responsible for all our communications as a program. And she was also the representative on Wise Acadia, which is women in science and engineering. And so that kind of gives you an idea of the many different, well, only some of the many things that Sammy was up to this year. But Sammy, I'll, I'll give it to you to maybe talk a little bit about your experience with women and gender studies. Hi, I hope this is working. Maybe, is it? Yes. Hi, um, so I'm Sammy. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction. So yeah, I graduated um, like, I guess a week ago when my diploma arrived here in my bedroom uh, and I finished uh, my honors in gender studies with a second major in sociology. So I'm like double excited to be here. Um, I didn't manage to nav anything for environmental sustainability, but two out of three ain't bad. 
so I guess just to kind of echo things that have been said already is something that I think is important about these fields, particularly in gender studies, because that's what I'm here to wrap, but um, social and uh, environmental sustainability as well. Um, and that I think these are the courses that will genuinely prepare you to be kind of a good citizen of the world and to have a very critical toolkit in which we can approach uh, many social issues or concepts uh, with empathy and compassion and be able to understand people's worldviews and experiences. Um, and I think now more than ever that we kind of find ourselves in very weird, peculiar times, it's fields like these where we're really buckling down to try and understand the truths of what's happening uh, and the truths of many people, uh, that these courses are really invaluable and super exciting to be taking. Um, and as well, echoing again that Acadia is really, really lovely uh, in that students get to put on so many hats and do lots of different things. Uh, so I had a really great time being the social media coordinator with gender studies this year, and I sat in on the planning committee meetings, so I had the opportunity to kind of see like the ins and outs of how the program was pulled together. Um, I worked with WISE, which was a nice opportunity for me because I, I kind of like longingly stare at the sciences, but uh, was pulled into the arts. So I got to kind of put my hat in a lot of different rings, as well as um, being involved in commit sociologies through uh, my, my second major in sociology, but also a cross-listed gender studies and sexuality course. Um, we hosted the Weinstein panel, which was really a great conversation uh, that your profs come to, uh, is the other thing about Acadia, is that your profs are really engaged and they're super caring. Um, and I know that right now, a lot of them are working very, very hard to make sure that no matter what the experience is come fall, that it's the best experience that you can have, that really prepares you for the next steps in your journey. So um, I'm assuming that I'll be hanging out after this if there are any questions, but it's great to kind of see that people are peeking into what their fall will look like. So. Thanks, Sammy. And uh, I think that's the end of the presentation for Women in Gender Studies. Okay, so a copy of this webinar will be available on our website 24 to 48 hours after um, and the other program webinars will also be available for you to view the ones that we did previously. Um, if you have any enrollment or admissions questions, um, you can direct them to Acadia for you at acadiau.ca. And if you have any program specific questions, you can contact um, sociology, women and gender studies and ESST directly. Um, if you don't know who to contact, you can email Acadia for you and we will forward your email on and get you in contact with the correct person. Now we are going to move on to the live question and answer period. Um, so you can type RH in the chat box if you would like to ask your question through microphone um, or you can just type the question through the chat. Um, and we'll answer them. Um, we will um, moderate the questions on a first come, first serve basis. So if you have any questions, you can type them now. No questions yet. Um, so Sammy, I'm going to ask you one. Um, do you have any advice that you will get that you would give um, a first year student or something you wish you knew when you're going into your first year at Acadia? Yeah, like there are so many things. It's um, now looking back, I guess that I've had the chance to really like truly look back on all of it that it's finished and I'm looking toward what's coming next. Um, looking back to first year, I a couple of things I wish that maybe I had been more proactive in was getting to know my professors. It took me until maybe, you know, into my second year, the second half of second year to like really come out of my shell and start talking to them, um, which is fine. And I think that's really normal. But uh, in first year, one of the nice things that you can do is that you have that newbie clause. So you really can just go and sit down in your prof's office and be like, I'm super overwhelmed. I'm really confused. Can you explain this to me? Um, so I guess maybe the first piece of advice I would have is to not be scared of your profs um, because they're people, usually very, very cool people. I've had no bad experiences with professors um, in any of these departments, uh, which is really rad. 
Um, I think as well, making reasonable expectations for yourself. So if I kind of look at where I finished my four year undergrad experience, I didn't think I was going to come out where I did. I uh, when I enrolled, I was just a soci major thinking about doing a gender studies minor and I wanted to go to law school. Um, and now I've finished with an honors in gender studies and a second degree in sociology uh, or second major and uh, not thinking about law school at all. I've applied for masters. Uh, so really it's being realistic with yourself and knowing that things are going to change, you're going to change, and it's really exciting that you will. Um, and also knowing that there are people that are here to support you, no matter what those changes look like. Uh, there's always someone that's really interested in whatever niche thing you're into, or even there are professors that like, they're curious enough about the niche you wanna dig into with your academic trajectory that they're gonna be willing to jump in with you and support you. Um, and to just be kind to yourself in first year. First year is hard, uh, that's super cheesy, but like it's a huge transition. Um, and especially now, I, I can't imagine not knowing what that transition will look like or where uh, it will take place for you or what your resources will be. I imagine that it's very stressful right now. Uh, so it's more important than ever to kind of check in with yourself and make sure that you're doing okay. Um, yeah, and, and to not be so tough on yourself because there's always kind of time to be kind and breathe and other times to buckle down and kind of tough love yourself. So those are maybe three or four, 600 pieces of advice. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. It was nice to hear um, from a student who recently graduated. Um, do we have any other questions? And if you are having any technical difficulties, um, typing your questions in the chat or using your microphone, you can email Acadia for you at acadiau.ca and we'll get the answers to your questions there. Um, this one's for you, Edith. Um, what are some career paths in environmental and sustainability studies? That's a great question. Uh, a lot of our students will go on to work for a, to a wide variety of organizations. Uh, many students end up in municipalities, uh, cities, city planning, um, town of Wolfville, there's currently someone who is the sustainability coordinator for Kings County. Uh, she graduated from our program, I think it was three years ago. Um, and so she's got a great job that she's loving there. We have someone who is working at the Ecology Action Center in Halifax. So a lot of students will go on to NGO work. And uh, a number of students actually end up working for corporations that are trying to make positive change. So um, we, we don't necessarily always move from the position that corporations are evil and we need to undermine them, but, uh, but maybe they are uh, entities that we need to work with to help uh, make more positive change. Uh, and then also a number of students will go on to graduate school. I hope that answers your questions. Any other questions? If you do think of questions after this webinar, like I said, you can reach out to Acadia for you, um, or you can email um, the departments directly. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, we all look forward to meeting you in the future.